Welcome to Humanity's Divine Spark from Divine Providence by Emmanuel Swedenborg, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. In the 18th century, a great Swedish scientist and inventor at the height of his career began to see visions of heaven, spirits, saints, and angels. He saw Lord Jesus, vegetarian, come to open his inner eye, which allowed him to travel in the celestial sphere and talk with different spiritual beings. This mystical experience transformed the scientist into an enlightened spiritual leader with a new understanding of Christianity. His name is Emmanuel Swedenborg, vegetarian. From 1744 onwards, Emmanuel Swedenborg spent over a decade writing down what he saw in his spiritual voyages in more than two dozen books. His visions of heaven and the afterlife, his realization that God is love, and his discovery of the Holy Bible's deeper meanings are just some of the revolutionary topics he bravely documented. The life and works of this remarkable spiritual world explorer inspire people to this day. Today, we are pleased to present a selection from Divine Providence, where Emmanuel Swedenborg, vegetarian, expounds on how we should behave on earth in order to be able to enter heaven. In all that it does, the Lord's divine providence looks to what is infinite and eternal. Divine providence regards what is infinite and eternal from itself, especially in saving mankind, because its object is a heaven for mankind. And therefore, it is man's reformation and regeneration or salvation to which it especially looks since heaven consists of the saved or regenerate. To regenerate a man, moreover, is to unite good and truth or love and wisdom in him, as they are united in the Lord's proceeding divine. To this especially, therefore, providence looks in saving the race. The image of the infinite and eternal is not to be found elsewhere in man than in the marriage of good and truth. This marriage, the proceeding divine affects men filled by the proceeding divine which is called the Holy Spirit, have prophesied, as we know from the word, men enlightened by it see divine truths in heaven's light. Above all, angels sensibly perceive the presence, influx, and conjunction, though they are aware that the conjunction is no more than can be termed a junction. It has not been known that divine providence in all its procedure with man looks to his eternal state. It can look to nothing else because the divine is infinite and eternal, and the infinite and eternal or the divine is not in time. Therefore, all future things are present to it. It follows that there is eternity in all that the divine does. But those who think from time and space perceive this with difficulty, not only because they love temporal things, but also because they think from what is on hand in the world and not from what is at hand in heaven. This is as remote to them as the ends of the earth. Those, however, who are in the divine, inasmuch as they think from the Lord, think from what is eternal as well as from what is at present, asking themselves, what is that which is not eternal? Is not the temporal relatively nothing? And does it not become nothing when it is past? The eternal is not so. It alone is. Its s has no end. To think thus is to think both from the present and the eternal. And when a man not only thinks so, but lives so, the proceeding divine with him or divine providence looks in all its procedure to the state of his eternal life in heaven and guides to it. In what follows it will be seen that the divine looks to the eternal in everybody, in an evil as well as in a good person. An image of the infinite and eternal offers in an angelic heaven. 
Among things we need to know about is the angelic heaven. Everyone who has any religion thinks about heaven and wishes to go there. Yet heaven is granted only to those who know the way to it and walk in that way. We can know the way to an extent by knowing the character of those who constitute heaven and by knowing that no one becomes an angel or comes into heaven unless he brings with him from the world what is angelic. In what is angelic, there is a knowledge of the way from walking in it, and a walking in the way through a knowledge of it. In the spiritual world, moreover, there are actually ways leading to every society of heaven or of hell. Each sees his own way as if for himself. He does so because a way is there for every love. The love discloses the way and takes a man to his fellows. No one sees other ways than the way of his love. Plain it is from this that angels are nothing but heavenly loves. Otherwise, they would not have seen the ways tending to heaven. This would be plainer still when heaven is described. Every man's spirit is affection and thought therefrom. And as all affection is of love and thought is of the understanding, every spirit is his own love and his own understanding therefrom. When a man is thinking solely from his own spirit, therefore, as he does in private meditation at home, he thinks from the affection belonging to his love. It is clear then that when a man becomes a spirit, as he does after death, he is the affection of his own love and has no other thought than that of his affection. If his love has been one of evil, he is an evil affection, which is a lust. If his love has been one of good, he is a good affection. Everyone has a good affection so far as he has shunned evils as sins, and an evil affection so far as he has not shunned evils as sins. As all spirits and angels then are affections, the whole angelic heaven is nothing but the love of all the affections of good and the attendant wisdom of all the perceptions of truth. Since all good and truth are from the Lord, and He is love itself, the angelic heaven is an image of Him. Furthermore, as divine love and wisdom are human in form, it also follows that the angelic heaven must be in that form. For more information, please visit Internet Sacred Text Archive, sacred-texts.com. No to vegan, only people with a loving heart choose it. Wise viewers, we thank you for your company today for Words of Wisdom.